In this video, you're going to learn how to find the derivative using the limit definition. And we're going to go through three important examples that you're going to want to know. Three different types that are a little bit uh, unique. So the first thing is, what do we mean when we're talking about the derivative anyways? Well, let's talk about where it comes from. Let's just say that this is your, your function here, okay, or your curve. And you have a point on the curve, let's say x. And when you go up to that point on the curve, the y coordinate is going to be f of x. So you put that x value into your function and out comes the y value or the, what's, uh, the f of x value. Now if you go a little bit further to the right, let's just say this is an arbitrary distance of h, this is going to be x plus h, and when you go up to that point on your curve or put it into your function, you're going to get the corresponding y value, which is f of x plus h. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to find the slope between these two points. Now the slope is sometimes referred to as the average rate of change. And what you're doing is this is basically like a secant line. It cuts through that graph at two points. But remember your slope formula. It's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You learned that in algebra. So in this case, it's our y2 is f of x plus h minus y1, that's f of x, all over x2, which is x plus h minus x1, which is x. Now notice the x's cancel because one's positive and one's negative. And this is oftentimes referred to as the difference quotient. Difference means you're subtracting. Quotient means you're dividing. But let me just write this a little bit simpler here. f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. But now what we're going to do is we're going to take the limit as h approaches zero. Now what does that mean? It means as this distance becomes smaller and smaller, okay, meaning as h gets smaller and smaller, this point here gets closer and closer to this first point until they're right on top of one another. And what happens there is you get now, instead of the average rate of change or the secant line, you get the instantaneous rate of change, which is represented by this tangent line. So it just barely touches the curve at this one point now because those two points are right on top of one another. So that's what we're talking about when we talk about the limit as h approaches zero, and this is oftentimes referred to as f prime of x. This is the first derivative. But you can see, what is a derivative? It's really like a formula for the slope of the tangent line at any point along this curve. So I'm going to show you in these examples how to work with this. So in this first example, f of x equals x squared minus 4x, we're just going to use this limit definition for a derivative. We're going to say, let's take x plus h, Let's put it in for x, wherever you see x on the right. So this is going to be x plus h squared minus 4 times x plus h minus f of x, which remember f of x, that's this equation here, this original formula, all divided by h. Okay, now we're going to do a little arithmetic. We're going to simplify. x plus h times x plus h comes out to x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. If you're not sure, you can write this twice and FOIL it out. If I distribute the negative 4, we get negative 4x minus 4h. If I distribute the negative, I get negative x squared plus 4x, all divided by h. Now, it looks like there's some cancellation that occurs here, these x squareds, these uh, 4x's, and we're left with 2xh plus h squared minus 4h, all divided by h. Now, I can divide each of these groups by h, which would leave us with 2x plus h minus 4. But remember, this is the limit as h approaches 0. So that means now if I put 0 in for h, I get 2x minus 4. So this is our, our derivative, f prime of x, which equals 2x minus 4. But what does this represent? Well, let's just take a, a look at what this graph looks like here. x squared minus 4x, it's a parabola that opens up Okay, because the a value is positive, and it has zeros or x-intercepts at 0 and 4. So the graph is going to look something roughly like that. But remember, this derivative is a formula for the slope or the instantaneous rate of change of the tangent line at any point along this curve. So for example, if I was to put in 0 here, 2 times 0 is 0, minus 4 is negative 4. So that means right here at 0, the slope of this tangent line is going to be negative 4. If I was to put 2 in, 2 times 2 is 4, minus 4 is 0. So over here at x equals 2, the slope of the tangent line is 0. It's horizontal. If I was to put in, let's say, positive 4, 
2 times 4 is 8, minus 4 is 4. So here at 4, now we have a positive 4 for our slope. So you can see the slope of that tangent line is changing depending on where you are on that curve. But the derivative is really like a formula that allows us to find the slope of that tangent line by putting in the corresponding x value. So let me erase the whiteboard. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, for example number two now, we have this square root function, f of x equals square root of x minus three. So we wanna find the derivative using the limit definition. So that's this right here. So we start by putting x plus h in for x. So this is gonna look like this. It's a square root of x plus h minus three minus f of x, which is this original function right here, square root of x minus three, all divided by h. And remember, it's the limit as h approaches zero. If I try to put zero in right now for h, you're gonna get what's called the indeterminate form. You're gonna get zero over zero, which really doesn't make any sense. We don't know what it is. Is it zero? Is it undefined? Is it one? You know, we, we're not sure. So what we do is we wanna rewrite this by multiplying by the conjugate. The conjugate is, um, you're gonna change the sign in between. So this is like rationalizing the numerator. So x plus h minus three, instead of minus, I'm gonna change this to plus, the square root of x minus three, whatever I do to the numerator, I have to do to the denominator. So that's like multiplying by one, right? And so if I multiply this binomial times this binomial, the inside and outside are gonna cancel because one's negative, one's positive. When I multiply a square root times itself, I just get what's underneath, x plus h minus three. And if I multiply a negative times a positive, I get a negative, square root of x minus three times square root of x minus three is x minus three all divided by h times this quantity here, x plus h minus three plus square root of x minus three. Okay, now let's see if we can do a little simplifying. So this is x minus x, so those are gonna cancel. This is negative three plus three, so those are gonna cancel. These h's, h divided by h is just gonna cancel to one. So we just get one over the square root of x plus h minus three plus the square root of x minus three. But remember, this is the limit as h approaches zero. Now I can put zero in for h now. That's gonna be square root of x minus three plus square root of x minus three, which is one over two times square root of x minus three. And this is our f prime of x. This is our derivative right here. Now remember, what is the derivative? It's a formula for the slope of the tangent line at any point along this curve. Now I graph square root of x minus three right here to illustrate, like if I put in, let's say four, okay, which is right here, so I go up to the curve. So at that point, four minus three is one, the square root of one is one, times two is two, so this is one half. So that means that the slope of the tangent line right at this point would be a half, okay? Now what happens if I put in, let's say, um, seven? Seven minus three is four, square root of four is two, times two is four, that's one fourth. So if I was to go over here to seven, go up to the curve. Now you can see the slope of the tangent line is one fourth. And that's because you can see this is curving, it's getting less and less steep, right? So if I was to put in, let's say three, that's gonna be zero, and when we divide by zero, that's undefined, which makes sense because we have a vertical, see the tangent line would be vertical right here at this point. So again, remember the derivative is really a formula for the slope of the tangent line at any point along the curve, you just have to put in that corresponding x value into your first derivative. Now let me erase the whiteboard. I wanna show you one other different type of problem you're gonna to wanna to know when you're finding the derivative. f of x equals one over x plus two. So using our limit definition for the derivative, we start by putting x plus h in for x. So this would look like this, one over x plus h plus two minus f of x, which is our original function, that's one over x plus two, all divided by h. Now, remember, this is the limit as h approaches zero, but we wanna simplify this and rewrite it first. If we try to put zero in right now, we're gonna get zero over zero, which is that indeterminate form we talked about earlier. So let's go ahead and clear this complex fraction by multiplying by the lowest common denominator, which is the x plus h plus two times x plus two. If we do that to the numerator, we wanna do it to the denominator. And we're doing this to clear these fractions here. So if we distribute to here, the x plus h plus two and the x plus h plus two would cancel, leaving us with one times x plus two. If we distribute to the second fraction, the x plus twos cancel and we're left with one times x plus h plus two. And then in the denominator, we're just left with h times 
x plus h plus 2 times x plus 2. Okay, now let's do a little simplifying here. Uh, x minus x, those are going to cancel. Uh, 2 minus 2, those are going to cancel. We have a negative h divided by h. That's going to reduce to negative 1 over x plus h plus 2 uh, times x plus 2. Now remember, it's the limit as h approaches 0. So now let's go ahead and put 0 in for h. That's going to give us x plus 2 times x plus 2, which is uh, negative 1 over x plus 2, the quantity squared. And so that's our f prime of x. That's our derivative. Okay, which again, remember the derivative is a formula for the slope anywhere along our graph. So for example, if I was to put in a negative 1, negative 1 plus 2 is 1, 1 squared is 1, negative 1 over 1 is negative 1. So at this point, negative 1, this has a slope of negative 1. If I was to put in, uh, let's say, 0, 0 plus 2 is 2, 2 squared is 4, that would give us negative 1 fourth. So right here at 0, the tangent line has the slope of negative one-fourth. So depending on where you are on this curve, the slope of the tangent line is going to be different because it's not a straight line. So this is how you approach finding the derivative using the limit definition. And again, remember, it comes from the slope. If you want to learn more about the derivative, you want some more practice, I'll put some uh, a video I did right there previously. Check out that video. We'll get some more practice. I'll see you there.